Amen. You know, uh, <clears throat> in the beginning of this year, God gave us a message on breakthrough. And I believe that God's sending breakthroughs, amen, amen. And, yes. in our families and on the jobs. We're, we're expecting people to get saved in our families. We're expecting God to give promotion on the job to our people. Why is that? Because God is gracious and they're serving him. I'm praying this year and I'm believing for prosperity that God will increase the financial capability of the, of the people of the amen. ministry here. Uh, I believe that God's going to send the miraculous into play. Those who need healing will have miraculous healing take place. We, I, we, I think we could, everybody in this room I know has had some kind of a miracle happen to them if we would ask them what God has done. But God wants to do a whole lot more. He's not done yet, and he's not done with us. And one of the privileges, I think, as, I, as, I, as we progress in our ministry this, this time, I'm, I'm feeling just the great honor to, to be able to serve the Lord. Amen. To be able to represent Jesus to yes. different peoples and different yes. places. It's an honor. And how God is opening doors for this ministry around, literally around the world. Miraculously, we're being invited to 70 nations to minister. So uh, the only God could give us the strength and the capability Amen. to do something like that Amen. in our lifetime. It will take a lifetime to do all that. But the opportunity is there. Amen. So we thank God for that. What a privilege. What an honor. And uh, it's very, very, uh, very unusual. And I know uh, that, but the Lord knows our hearts. He said today in that word of prophecy, didn't he? He knows our hearts. He knows yes, he what we want to do for him. So we talked about breakthrough the other week, how God is going to send a breakthrough in our life. And just like, a, just like when a dam is holding all the water, but because of the pressure of the water, they're starting to get a crack in the wall of the dam. <laughs> then suddenly the, the wall breaks and the water just gushes forth. Well, that's the way it's going to happen in the blessings of God. How many believe yeah, that? Today? Lord, and let's yeah, give me yeah. praise for that today. You know, God wants to bless us. He's, the Lord God loves us. He's not mad at us. He's not angry with us. He loves us. He wants the best. He wants us to succeed more than we do. Amen? Yeah. We, you know, the world talks about, well, be a man of success. Well, God's already made us a success. Mm -hmm. We already are when we trust God and we're, we're relying upon Him for strength. So today, though, we're going to talk about going beyond breakthrough to the realm of spiritual power where it's really happening. You. you know, there's a reason why all the other kind of breakthroughs come, such as salvation, healing, miracles, prosperity, promotion, advancement, and elevation. He said we, we were going to be elevated as a ministry this morning. I take that mean all of us are going to be elevated. Amen. I see us as a team effort. This is a team. This is not a one-man deal here. This is a team. We're going to be, if one is raised, we're all going to be raised. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. So get ready for greater blessings this year because you've prayed and you've been faithful uh, as best that you possibly can. None of us are perfect. God's still working on all of us. How many would say amen to that today? He's still working on me. I'll tell you that. You can ask Adele right now. Amen. That he's still working on this guy right here. So, but you know, God sees your heart. He knows that your desire is for him. If it comes down to the, where the rubber meets the road, you're going to take the side of the Lord. I know that with all my heart. And he knows that. That's why he's pleased. But today we're going to take, the God has taken us in his word beyond breakthrough to the realm of power. And when you have the power of God with you and in your life, it makes all these that makes the dam start to get the crack in it. It makes the walls of the dam begin to burst. And I know that we were in a, in, in the Philippines one time when there was a storm and there was a dam in the city and it's flatlands where we were at. And the guy that was in charge of the dam, he panicked and he opened the floodgates. Can you imagine that? And he thought it would that he thought it would break the dam. So he goes ahead and opens the floodgates. The water covers the entire area, and houses were destroyed, people were drowned, and all that. And he was facing the Senate over there. They, they, they had questions for him. And boy, he should. I saw him on television. You should have seen his face. He looked white as a sheep. That guy was really scared. And uh, he was responsible for that. But it, as it can be negative, it can also be positive. When the waters of God's blessing began to flow across the land. And the Bible declares that the knowledge of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Well, that's where we come in. We're helping to, to bring that knowledge out through our gospel, through the, through the preaching and the teaching of this church and school. Graduating students who are now going into ministry. 
And when we were there, believe it or not, I was approached by a couple of folks that said they were in our crusade in 1979. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were teenage kids, and today they're pastoring churches. Amen. See, they, I would have never known. I said, Pastor Mike, you, <laughs> I remember you when you came in 1979. I was just a teenager. I was in that crowd. I got saved that night. Or I was healed that night. God called me that night. Boy, that makes every effort and thing we went through worth it all when you hear stuff like that. So the Bible declares, speaking about breakthrough, the realm of power is what creates it. If the realm of power is where we God wants to take us into, there's a place. I remember uh, one great evangelist said that there's a place in God that you that you get yourself that you that you want to get into, and, and in that place the miracles become the order of the day. Imagine that. Get into a place in the supernatural realm where God can begin to use you and God can begin to bless you personally in your own life in a wonderful way. And that's where God wants to take us today beyond the breakthrough to the realm of the real realm of spiritual power. But Daniel tells us that, I'll, I'll just quote it, Daniel 12, 4 says, Knowledge shall be increased. How many would agree that knowledge of mankind is being increased today? And we see all kinds of breakthroughs in, in the natural world, in science, medicine, technology, God's people will make breakthroughs in the realm of the spirit. I believe that at the same time that mankind, and the Bible declares that knowledge in the last days are going to be increased. You think about the advancements we've had in medicine the last 75 years. Some, one preacher I heard say that, that more, more advancements in science and technology have taken place in the last 75 years than they have been since the beginning of time. And that's really quite a statement about that. And then we, we know about the moon program, and we know about going to the stars, and now our government is talking about going to Mars now. Well, well you've already been to the moon, now let's go to Mars. So this kind of thing is going on. The technology exists, and the weapons of warfare are just out of sight. And we know some people that told us some things about what we've got as a nation, and it's awesome. Let me tell you, it's just absolutely unbelievable what we have but man's knowledge is being increased in the natural realm well what about God's people in the spiritual realm I believe with all my life all, all my heart here today that just as God is advancing mankind and technology he's going to advance the body of Christ yes amen, amen. we're going to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord greater than ever before and that's and so our our what do we do then to get into there we have to first acknowledge the fact that God wants to bring us there that he wants us to go to that place in him to where these advancements will take place in our spiritual life. And don't be afraid of God taking you to a higher level. That's what we really were yearning for. Now the highest level will be one day when we get to heaven and be with the Lord. Amen. That's going to be the highest one. That's, that's the one that will, will take place. But in the meantime, while we're still on the earth, God wants to bless us here. And how, how many believe that? Amen. God wants to bless us yeah. here. Amen. Not just when we get to heaven. We have to understand that. That's why there, it's exciting to serve God. When you realize that he wants to do things for us now. Not just in the future. But now. And of course we have the peace in our heart to know that because we know Jesus. That in the future we will be with him. Amen. Amen. That to me is a great, uh, that's a great blessing. I have peace in my heart knowing that in the future we will be with the Lord. But what about in the meantime? Well, in the meantime, he wants to advance the body of Christ. Yes. Yes. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally, intellectually, you know, powerfully. He wants to do that. And the, and the power of the Holy Spirit has all those attributes contained therein. Amen. Amen. So when you have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, you are a candidate to be used in a great capacity for the Lord. Amen. Now, all the glory will go back to God. No matter what you do, no matter how great God may use you, uh, no matter how many people that you went to the Lord, or how many people were healed, or how many people have been encouraged or blessed because of your life, remember that at the end of the day, all the glory goes back to our Lord. Amen. Amen. We take none of the glory. We're just servants of God working in the harvest fields, bringing forth the things of the Lord. The Bible declares in, in uh, this turn to Ephesians chapter 1, Verse 17 through 19, we're going to talk about how God is going to give us uh, spiritual breakthroughs in the realm of the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, now this is a prayer of the Apostle Paul, that God will reveal to us greater things. It's talking to the body of Christ here today. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Oh, again, I want to read that again. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, Amen. you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. And here it is. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Amen. What a prayer. Thank what a statement to the body of Christ. That, that, that was written 2,000 years ago. But let me tell you something. That, that same desire of God for his people is still in force today in the 21st century. God wants to take us to a higher level. Are we willing? You know, we don't have to worry about somebody. People might say, but I don't know if I'm capable of that. Well, it's not our capability. We're operating with God's capability. And in God, he can take us Amen. to a higher realm Amen. in the spirit yes. if we want to. Amen. If we desire. Boy, I know I do. And I'm yes. sure you do. Amen. You know, we want to go beyond. We want to mature. We want to be stronger in God. We don't want to just be at the low level. We want to be at a higher level. That's a natural. Every human being wants to excel and to ex and go beyond. How much more than the body of Christ? Yes. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you wisdom. That's his wisdom. <laughs> his revelation and in the knowledge of him. What for? That the eyes, our spiritual eyes, remember, eye hath not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Amen? Amen. We, we, so we realize today that God is speaking to our hearts here today, that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, not I hope so, think so, maybe so, it is so. Our hearts are being enlightened. So what for? That we can know the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. Amen. Amen. So he has revelation. He has wisdom and knowledge, power, understanding, granting it to every one of us here today, Amen. to the power of God, to the knowledge of God. We depend on these things today for, to be able, be able to minister and to work for the Lord. Without God's help, how many know we're helpless? Amen. We cannot do anything without the help of God. It's God today who gives us his capability, his wisdom, his knowledge. Sometimes when you pray, God will give you the answer. He'll show you what to do. Yeah. Or you'll hear a message. You come to church and you have questions or you've been concerned about something. And the preacher will start talking about it. So, well, how did he know about it? He didn't. It's the Holy Spirit that knows what we need before we get here. Yeah. How many will say amen to that? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He knows what we need before we yeah. get here. So that's why he's causing an anointed preacher who's in contact with God to say those kind of things yeah. because we don't know what everybody's going through at home but the Lord knows he's a silent listener to every conversation he knows our hearts desire he knows what we want before we ever got to church amen. this morning thank God we made it amen yes. amen thank God it's because he wants to bring us wisdom revelation and knowledge of him so that the eyes of our spiritual understanding our spiritual eyes can begin to understand and comprehend God's greatness. Yes. Amen? You, it's not the natural man doesn't understand. You tell this to an unsaved person, they don't know what you're talking about. But you tell somebody that knows Jesus about how God wants to reveal things, they'll understand you. Amen. They'll understand what you're saying. Yeah, God wants to show me more things. That's right. That's right. And thank God that he, that he does. And, and he wants us to be enlightened. You know, it's, ignorance is a terrible thing. People who we were before we knew the Lord, we were ignorant of the things of God. Yes. Now that's not being unintelligent. Ignorance just means you're not informed. That's all. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to people of other faiths who now serve the Lord, and they said, "I I just didn't know. I didn't understand before." Well, that's <laughs> fine. God forgives that. We all didn't understand before, Amen. but now right. we do. Amen. Yes. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to us 
his word so we can start to understand what God's trying to tell us. And today, he wants to get us to the realm of power. Amen. 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 This is where you fight the devil. This is where you have victory in your home, on the job. This is where you, you gain power over the enemy. And God gives you that supernatural power to be a blessing ever over where you go. This is what we're talking about here today. So what is the power that is working in us by the Spirit? Well, this power would, would also include revelation, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, enlightenment, inheritance, faith, trust, obedience, and the anointing of healing and miracles. Amen. Can you imagine that? I'm going to read that again. This is what's contained when we come into that place as Paul prayed for the church to come into that place of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Lord yeah. and how he operates and how he works. And what does, so if I, what's contained in all that? Revelation, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, enlightenment, inheritance, faith, trust, obedience, anointing, healing, and miracles. Amen. Amen. Now it took me many years to understand this even as a young minister, I can tell you when I started off, I didn't know all this, okay? I didn't understand the depth here exactly. I had an idea, I heard about it, but, but when later on, through many years later, when we went to a, a particular conference where there was a, an evangelist that was heavily anointed, we began to understand the rest of the story. Amen. And I'm glad today to share that, that with you, those things that I didn't understand before. Boy, if I'd known that before, whoa, but it's still not too late. Amen. No. Thank God we're beginning to understand it. Now, you mean to say that all these blessings are contained when you go beyond the realm of the breakthrough into the realm of power? That's exactly right. Thank you. That's exactly right. See, the enemy hopes you never find this out. He hopes you'll never understand your position in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. He hopes we'll never find out how powerful we can become in God once we allow the Holy Spirit to, in, to not only infill us, begin to use us. Yes. And to enter into that, as that pastor said, get, in, <coughs> excuse me, get into that place in God where God can begin to use you like that. The problem, here's the problem that I've seen the last 50 some years. The problem with spirit-filled people is they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they start, they speak in tongues, but then they stop after that, they stop praying, fasting, waiting on God, and they never go beyond that point uh, of power. They just right. stay there. Say, so, well, right. I've got the Holy Spirit now, praise the Lord. Yeah, but that's just the start. Yeah. Yes. That's day one. <laughs> <laughs> so, and a lot of them don't know that. They say, well, I'm spirit-filled. Yeah, that's true, you are. And, 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 but you see, we need to go further than that. Amen. Amen. We need to continue to pray. You know, a lot of them, when we were looking or searching for the power of God in the beginning, we did those things. But sometimes we level off. Yeah. Well, we got the experience. Well, praise God, we're filled with the Spirit. Yeah, but now what? <laughs> now let's get to step number two. And that's to continue in the things of God. Continue to pray. Don't stop praying. Yeah. Don't take for granted because of the anointing. Amen. Don't take, ever take the anointing for granted. You know, one of the great treasures that we have as, as preachers of the gospel is the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the ministry. Amen. Without that, we can't do anything. Amen. Without that, we couldn't, I couldn't preach like this until I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I felt the anointing. Amen. I was not able to speak like, people used to ask me, Pastor Ray, how can you speak like that just extemporaneously? You just go, well, how can you do all that? It's, it's not me, it's the anointing that's right. on my life. That's right. Without that, I couldn't do it. And that's the truth. Amen. So we've got to go beyond just the initial experience of the Holy Spirit to really get into the realm of the Holy Spirit. That's what we want to do. We want to go beyond the breakthroughs into the realm of power where it's all really happening today. The power of God is where the victory is to overcome even the devil and his works. Yeah. And we need that today. The church of Jesus Christ, we don't have to stand around helpless and we see the enemy destroying lives and families and homes and people on the job or destroying their physical health. How many know God came here to bring us healing? We heard that this morning. Yeah. Yeah. God wants us healed. And I believe we heard that today, didn't we? Amen. God wants us well. He wants us strong. 
He wants our families blessed. That's his desire for us. Yes. Not just to go to heaven someday, but to be blessed while they're here on the yes. earth with the power of God Amen. and the inspiration Amen. of the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. I didn't mean to get so anointed up here today, but there's an anointing here today. The power of God is where the victory lies. You get into the power, you're going to have to see more victories in your life. Thank you, Jesus. And, and the victory also includes overcoming the devil and his works of darkness. The Bible says in James 4, 7, submit yourself to God uh, there and resist the devil. And the Bible says he'll flee from you. Amen. You begin to rebuke the enemy. Don't allow him to try to disrupt your homes or your businesses or your personal lives or your physical body. Don't allow it. Come against it and fight it all the way. And even when a person is sick in the hospital, we still believe God can heal them. Yes. We still believe there could be a miracle in their lives. Amen. How many say amen, amen to that today? Amen. <coughs> First John 3, 8. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came. One of the things the Lord came to do was to destroy the works of the devil. Not to let it go on, not to just tolerate, to tolerate. No. No, to destroy the works of the devil. We're in a race against time to win the loss for Christ with the gospel. In, this, in spite of breakthroughs, the devil is still fighting and half the world has not heard yet about Jesus. It's sad to say that even in America, as I speak with young people, box boys and box girls at the market, commenting on their names such as Noah, Isaiah, Joshua, they don't even know the origin of their name came from the Bible. I like to, when we're, we're in line, I see a lot of young people doing the box boxing thing. And I know they're all college students. I know they're all going to school. And they're, and they're learning uh, as they go about working. And so uh, I'll ask them. I'll see their name is Noah. Their name is Isaiah. Their name is Jeremiah. And I'll ask them about, so you know you have a famous name from the Bible? I do. I didn't know that. They had no knowledge at all. That's sad. Named after these wonderful characters in the Bible. And, and yet there's a lack of, because it's a lack of knowledge. Again, it's spiritual ignorance. It's not that they're not, they're not intelligent. Is they're not informed. Amen. Well, that's where we come in. And I would tell them just briefly because I don't want to go on and on when people are waiting in line at the grocery store. But I notice that they're listening too when I tell these young people. You know that Jeremiah, he was a hero. He was. <laughs> anyway, okay, rocket scientist. Tiger. But, but anyway, but I get to tell them. Then they get excited. I didn't know my name meant all that. I said, yeah. Your name means all that. So they get real, real excited about that. <laughs> we need a greater revelation uh, 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 of, of our understanding of the power of God and the Spirit more than ever before. You know why? We're in the last days. Yes. Amen. Jesus is coming amen. soon. Now, we don't know the day nor the hour. Nobody's supposed to get up there and uh, synchronize their watches. You know, there was a group one time that went up to Mount Wilson and they all put on white robes and they, were, they said that Jesus was coming and they went up there and they were synchronizing their watches waiting for him to come. I think they're still up there waiting. You know? They shouldn't have done that. See, the Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour, but we know the signs of the times. Yes. Yes. We know what the word says of that. We are definitely, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree, we're living in the last days of time. The Lord's coming, but in the meantime, he told us to occupy until he comes back. That means we have to be uh, uh, constantly serving God, working for the Lord, doing the things of God until he gets back here. Amen. Amen. And Amen. we heard this morning in the, in, in the word of, of the prophecy that the Lord said he notices when we do all these things. Yes. Amen. Wow. That got my attention when he said that. Yes, Amen. sir. <laughs> he notices when we do those things. Praise the Lord. So we need greater revelation of, of his word. We need greater revelation of how the power of God works in our lives. When I, when I was so fascinated years ago with divine healing, watching, watching the Spirit of the Lord begin to move uh, in, in this regard, uh, of people being healed. I saw people, these evangelists, would reach out and touch them, and they would go down in the power, or they would be healed. I was fascinated with that. I hadn't been used like that yet. I used to get up as close as I could to just just to watch them, to observe them, how, the, how they ministered, how they operated, how the Holy Spirit worked on them. 
Uh, it, I saw some tremendous supernatural things uh, that took place on these stages and platforms that I know didn't come from this world. It even kind of shook me up, to be honest with you. But when I began to pray and seek God for a greater anointing on my ministry, and I had others pray for me that were operating already in these gifts of the Holy Spirit, then one day, finally, God began to use me in the same way. And I'm thankful that he did. And I've never, I don't think I've ever been the same since that time, realizing that what a privilege and honor to know that you could be used by God, that God is no respecter of persons. Uh, God, he can use you if you have that desire to draw closer, to have that revelation knowledge, the wisdom we talked about just now, going beyond the breakthrough realm to the realm where it's really at, and that's the power of God. Oh, do we need the power of God yes. manifest it greater than anything else. Greater revelation, greater power, more than ever. We're in the last days. John 14, 12, Jesus told the disciples, greater works than these shall you do, because I go to the Father. Well, we know when he went to the Father, he sent the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, Amen. to infill them, infuse them with power. And, of course, we know that after the day of Pentecost, the, uh, the power of God so came up within and upon these disciples, these apostles, they never were the same men again, ever again. Amen. Fear went away. <clears throat> lack of faith went away. Uh, intimidation went away. They weren't even afraid of the enemy. Nothing, nothing anymore was going to overwhelm them because now they walked in the power and the presence of the Lord. Let's give them a praise Amen. offering for all the things that we did today. Greater works than these shall you do. I, I was amazed when I first read that in the scriptures. I was amazed. You mean Lord wants us to do greater works? Yes, he said we would do greater works. And we know the works that Jesus did, my goodness. So we're, God wants to use every one of us here today in our capacity, Amen. in our fullness. He really does care about you and he cares about me. Amen. And he's observing our condition, the circumstance. God knows our circumstances here today. He's not ignoring them. Amen. Amen. He's, he's very well aware. He told us today. He's watching us. He's well aware of, of our situation here today. So we need greater spiritual breakthroughs. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, one of my favorite scriptures, this is from the NIV. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. Paul said... When I come to you, brothers, I come not with eloquence or superior wisdom. Now, first of all, we have to remember that the all had been an intellectual. He was a great learner, teacher, and he was a brilliant person to start with. Brilliant. But he realized that, that his education and background and intelligence was nothing in comparison to what God had. Amen. <laughs> and he realized it when he had this encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. And, and the Lord uh, touched him and talked to him. He realized then that all the education and background was secondary. Not even close to what God would be able to give him at that time to come. Now we're going to read it here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul said, when I come to you brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaim to you the testimony of God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling. My message and my preaching was not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on man's wisdom, but on the power of God. Whenever the Apostle Paul spoke and wrote, he was so powerful, so dynamic. Some who wouldn't understand might think, well, you know, he's got all this background education. No wonder he can talk. No, he tells them that's not what it is at all. In fact, what I had before is nothing compared to what I have now through the power of God. There's no comparison. He went beyond. God took him to another level. Where if they thought he was a very brilliant man, God took him to another level. And God wants to take us to another level here today. Yes. In our experience, in our walk with God. God is no respecter of persons. So he assures them. He said, I didn't come to you with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring the things of God. I was with you in weakness, fear, and trembling. In other words, hey, I'm just like the rest of you guys. I'm just like you, but the difference is I'm operating from the power of God. That's the key here today. And I said, I, and I, I, I come to you in weakness, fear, and trembling. My message and my preaching was not with demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest in man's wisdom, but 
your faith would rest in God's power. Amen. We want to go beyond that realm. Again, the realm of revelation, knowledge, wisdom, insight, power. That's what God wants to bring the body of Christ into today. It sounds, I know it sounds great. It is great. Yes. Amen. Is it possible for us to get there? Yes, yes it is. Yes, yes. yes it is. I wouldn't be preaching this if I didn't That's think right. so. Right. I, I was able to get into that. You're going to be able to get into it too. Amen. Yeah. If you're not already. Amen. I think we ought to give praise to that. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 6 through 9 and the NIV. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature. This is the Apostle Paul talking to the body of Christ even today. But not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Wow. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. Wow. Now, we have to understand this. That the Lord desired even before time began that his people would come into this kind of knowledge. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. That's that's this blows me away when I read this. None of the rules of this age, none of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has conceived. What God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. There we go again. Amen. Into that. You get into the realm of the spirit, what happens? God starts to teach you about his wisdom. He starts to teach you, gives you greater knowledge. He starts to give you greater spiritual insight, not only into his word, but how to handle stuff on the job, at school, at home, in your personal life. He starts, this can apply not just to the, to the things of the, of the church, but it applies to our everyday life. Yes. He wants to bring us into that realm of wisdom and knowledge. And people are amazed sometimes at what you might say. You'll be amazed. You'll be witnessing to somebody and scriptures will come out of you that you didn't even know you knew. <laughs> Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit is inside of you wrote the book. Thank you, Lord. He knows what's in there. <laughs> yes, he... It's like I tell some friends that are in the oil business and the gold business, well, don't worry about it. God put it there. He knows where it is. <laughs> he's, he's the one that put it there in the ground in the first place. So if you start asking him about it, you might find it. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. It's rock aside this time. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read this again. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature. He means spiritually mature. But not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Wow. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, means natural eye, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed it to us by his Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. When you begin to realize the blessings, the potential to be blessed by God, to be understood by God, to understand the things of God. That's fantastic. Our breakthrough is, uh, is faith not standing in man's wisdom, but in God's power. Yes. We're going to pray in a little bit Thank for you, you to Lord. receive greater power in your lives mm -hmm. at the end of the service today and for our viewing audience. We need power. We need the power of God in our lives. Yes. Luke uh, uh, says here in uh, Acts 1.8, Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you'll be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Well, yes, in the first 200 years, the gospel spread around the known world. Yeah. But guess what? In our generation, we're, we're spreading it too. Yeah. Yes, we are. Amen. Not only literally going, we're doing it through television. Mm -hmm. We're doing it through the internet. We're, we're preaching the gospel even on the internet to the world who can pick it up in seconds. Yeah. Well, I, we got an email the other day from somebody that was in, here in California watching me preach over in the Philippines. And they sent me a note and said, hey, way to go, Pastor Mike. <laughs> that shook me up. Amen. That's, awesome. That's 10,000 miles away. And they're watching it while I'm over there preaching it. 
That's incredible. So that's how quickly we're in the information age. Well, how God can spread the gospel now, literally to the world. He said Amen. he would. Right. And guess what? He's using us to help people. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. What a privilege. God appreciates that. <clears throat> then he told them what to do. He told them in Luke 24, 49, tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. He wanted them to wait on the Holy Spirit to get themselves spiritually into that realm where all this stuff starts to happen. Did they do it? Yes, they did. <laughs> we know they did. Because on the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Spirit. Amen. And, and, and this, and then John 1, 12. This is beautiful. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power or the ability to become God's sons. You're God's sons and daughters out there today. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Jesus forgave us and he saved us today. He filled us with his, he trusts us Everybody. with his spirit. Can you believe that? Amen. He trusts us to serve him in this generation, this hour, this moment in time. That's why we can't fail. We have to ask God, ask God every day to please don't let me fail. Lord. Help me to do what I'm supposed to do. Help us to do, to be the kind of people we're supposed to be so we can serve him properly. Now we're going to close with this. As we enter the season of breakthrough, let's also seek God for a breakthrough in the supernatural power of God that will bring favor, healing, miracles, finances, wisdom, and purpose for the sake of the gospel. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you today for the, your power that you would bring in us even beyond the the breakthrough stage into the realm of supernatural power. Lord, help us to come into that place today in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to be so yield as they were on the day of Pentecost that you filled them. The 120 in the upper room were transformed that day. And we're being transformed in our day, too, as we yield ourselves to your Holy Spirit. Lord, give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your word and how you operate these great truths, Lord. As you said, you, you had even envisioned this understanding and, and wisdom for us even before time began. We're thanking you, Lord. What a privilege to come into that place in the realm of the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless each one of them here today. May everyone enter into that realm and, us, and our viewing audience as well. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said, amen. 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 Let's give the Lord praise. I want us all stand for a minute. Let's all stand. I'm just going to.